Hello everyone, I'm Chao Yulu from Tsinghua University and thanks for joining us. In this talk, we present a large-scale measurement study of the Whois ecosystem under the GDPR. We'll focus on the scale of Whois data changes and security works that are impacted by data reduction. The GDPR is a European regulation that provides a high-level framework about protecting personal data. It has an expanded territorial scope and can apply to any organization as long as it possesses personal data of subjects in the EU. So changes are needed for many internet applications, like websites should now display consents before they'd set cookies. And the Domain Registration Database, or Whois database, is within the list. When a domain is created, personal data is collected from registrants, including their names, addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses. The data is then stored by Whois providers, such as registrars and registries. And at the same time, Whois providers provide free query-based access to the data. Any host on the internet may use the Whois protocol to check whether a domain is registered, as well as its contact information. And for a long time, the public Whois has been a critical data source for the security community. It provides clues to tracking malicious domain holders and cyber attacks, so changes on the Whois may affect various security systems. However, since the GDPR went effective, certain personal data in Whois is protected, so the current Whois model needs changes. And in response, ICANN published a temporary specification for registration data in May 2018. The TEM spec provides guidelines on how Whois should change to comply with the GDPR. Collection of registration data is still maintained, so domain holders still provide personal information to registrars and registries. However, access to the registration data is restricted to parties with legitimate purposes, and the data is no longer publicly available. And here we summarize the data publishing requirements of the TEM spec. Before Whois data is released, pub providers should replace certain fields with redacted or anonymized values. Names, addresses, and phone numbers should be replaced with redacted values, such as redacted for privacy or empty values. Email addresses should be filled with anonymized email addresses or web forms that enable direct communication with domain holders. And as a result, many key fields are now missing in the Whois data. The TEM spec also gives flexibility on which domain records should be protected, that is, domains held by European Economic Area registrants only or global registrants. So in this study, we aim to measure the impact of the GDPR on Whois and provide answers to the following questions. First, we want to learn the current data publishing changes of Whois providers. Are they following the requirements of the TEM spec? And how do they redact personal data? Plus, we want to measure the impact of Whois data loss on security works, and more specifically, how many of them rely on the redacted data, and what are they used for? First, our methodology of measuring data publishing changes, that is, identifying data reduction of Whois providers. We use a data-driven approach for this task. Our research is made possible using a large historical Whois dataset. This dataset spans two years and covers dates before and after the GDPR went effective, so we're able to observe changes. And on this dataset, we identify Whois records that are protected or redacted by providers and give each of them a compliance rank. The challenge we face during data collection is that this ecosystem is fragmented. Hundreds of providers maintain who is and the formats are inconsistent. And to solve this problem, we obtain a parsed historical who is dataset from an industrial partner. As a part of threat intelligence, the company connects who is records of domains observed in the passive DNS. And the data is then parsed by hundreds of who is templates that are manually generated for different providers. 
We use the WHOIS records collected during January 2018 to December 2019, and here is an overview of the dataset. In total, it contains WHOIS records of over 200 million domain names, and 12% of all domains are held by EEA registrants, and 13% are created before year 2010. And all records are collected from port 43 of WHOIS servers. The challenge for compliance analysis is that providers may use different wordings or even different languages for data redaction, so it is difficult to identify whether one given WHOIS record is properly protected. And our solution to this problem is based on an observation that providers tend to replace the field values at scale automatically. And as a result, if WHOIS records of one provider is redacted at scale, they should show high textual similarity. And the redacted records can then form text clusters, leaving the unprotected ones as outliers. And finally, we can use the outlier ratios to determine whether providers enforce large-scale data redaction. And based on this observation, we design a system called GC Checker for this task. First, the system groups who is records according to their providers, such as registrars and registries, and according to their registrant regions, such as EEA and non-EEA domain holders, and their data subjects. It also groups them by weeks, so we can study the changing dynamics. And each group of data is then analyzed separately. And the system then pre-processes each group of data, including normalizing field values and extraction TF-IDF features for text clustering. And each group of WHOIS records is then clustered by DB scan, and the clusters are refined by NER annotators. And through this step, we aim to identify WHOIS records that are not properly redacted as outliers. And finally, each provider is given a compliance rank according to the weekly outlier ratios. We leave more details of the system in our paper due to the time limit. And in the next part, we report our findings on the compliance status of 143 large WHOIS providers. We first find that most investigative providers redact data well. Over 85% of them are classified as fully compliant with the TAM spec, which means they properly redact WHOIS data for over 95% of EEA domains that they sponsor. And corresponding with their domain share, the fully compliant registrars sponsor at least half of all registered domains. And as a result, WHOIS data for EEA domains have been largely hidden from public users. However, we also find some flawed implementations of data redaction. For example, Four registrars protect all but the registrant address fields, and we recommend that they update their current policies. And from the timeline, we find that over 80% of investigated providers completed data protection before the GDPR went effective. However, prominent efforts were taken after the TEM spec was published, which is only one week before the GDPR effective date. Reflecting on our data, the weekly outlier ratio of providers drops significantly around that date. And we discuss the finding with a leading registrar and learn that the providers chose to wait, possibly because of a void of guidance. And for their contact masking measures, we find that most providers are following the TEM spec using different redacted values or empty values. And some registrars also use privacy protection services to mask personal data. And for email addresses, the TEM spec requires that the interfaces provided here should facilitate direct communication with domain holders. However, we find over a quarter fully compliant registrars, while they hide the original email addresses, do not offer direct communication channels. For example, they may use links to data access and systems or unified email addresses for all domains. And as a result, it becomes difficult for others to reach to these domain holders. And for the scope of protected domains, the TEM spec leaves, leaves flexibility for providers to decide. And through analysis on non-EEA domains as well, 
we find that at least 60% providers are redacting WHOIS data for all domains, both EEA and non-EEA. As a result, the impact of WHOIS loss is escalated. And we also discussed this observation with the registrars and learned several possible reasons. The publication of the temp spec was late, so determining which data should be protected was challenging and difficult for providers. Meanwhile, redacting all data at once saves future work to comply with other emerging privacy policies, such as the CCPA. However, this is bad news for security researchers that are using WHOIS, as the data loss have been very much underestimated. In the second part of this work, we study the security impact of WHOIS data loss, particularly on security literature. And for this task, we download all papers published at five top-tier security conferences since 2005 from the conference websites. And on the corpse of over 4,000 papers, we identified 51 works that rely on the public domain WHOIS database. We read all papers to determine which WHOIS fields are used by them, and a work is affected if the fields are required to be redacted. We find that up to 69% of them rely on the redacted data. These works cover a wide range of security topics, such as domain security, detection of spamming and fraud, and tracking of cybercrime. And they often use WHOIS for measurement purposes and as features for detection. We also find that registrant contact information and email addresses are frequently used by these works. However, the data is now, largely redact is now largely redacted, so the security systems may need review and adjustments. And finally, although WHOIS data can be accessed under legitimate purposes, a previous survey shows that a large part of requests from security researchers have been rejected. Meanwhile, some data accessing systems now lack instructions. So to remediate the security impact of who is data redaction, we recommend a better format of tiered access and data redaction. The RDAP protocol can be used to control data access. And instead of one same redacted value for all domains, measures like fuzzy hashing hide the original values but keep the distances between them, which can be helpful for security systems. Also, security systems that rely on redacted WHOIS may need adjustments. And some discussions and summary. Through our findings, we conclude that the GDPR's impact on WHOIS is substantial. Most WHOIS providers now actively and extensively redact personal data to comply with the regulations. However, a large a, a number of security works can thus be affected due to data loss. We also conclude that enforcing privacy policies is still a complex task. The temp spec leaves flexibility, but it was published later than expected, which causes confusion among providers. Implementation flaws were not found due to a lack of checking tools. And meanwhile, this task requires more efficient collaboration across multiple communities to reach a balance of data privacy and security. And some recommendations to the stakeholders. Earlier and more specific guidelines are needed from supervisors. And who is providers may need to review their current policies and security researchers may adjust their systems. Meanwhile, the, the system developed in this work is released as a compliance checking tool Authorized WHOIS providers may use it to check their current compliance status. And finally, a quick summary of this work. Through large-scale measurement, we confirm that the GDPR has profound impact on the WHOIS ecosystem. A lot of providers actively and extensively redact data, causing a global data loss. And meanwhile, a wide range of security works rely on WHOIS and thus may need adjustments. From our findings, we conclude that multiple stakeholders need more efficient collaboration to comply with privacy regulations and release a checking tool. So this is my talk today, and I'm happy to take questions.